second step is to check the conditions necessary to conduct the test, which mostly should sound familiar. The first is that both samples must be randomly selected from their individual populations so we don't have any bias. Also, our samples must be under 10% of the populations for which they came from. So we assume 200 men is less than 10% of all men in the city and 250 women is less than 10% of all women in the city. Now, the third condition is that we must have 10 or more successes in our sample of men and 10 or more failures, as well as 10 or more successes and 10 or more failures in our sample of women. That means that we need 10 or more men that have a college degree expected, and then 10 or more that don't have a college degree expected for both the men and women. But this is where something a little bit weird happens. A lot of kids are going to do what they would maybe do for an interval, and they're going to use the data from the sample. If you remember from our sample, we had 60 men, that's more than 10. Out of 200, that leaves 140, that's also more than 10. But we don't want to use those numbers in a test. That's because in a test, we have an assumption that the null hypothesis is true. And the null hypothesis is that there's no difference. So what we do here is a little bit weird. A lot of kids forget about this, is we say, let's just combine both of our samples together. If the null is that they're the same, then why treating them different? If they're the same, what's it matter if you're a man or a woman? Let's just put them all together. So we're going to put all 60 plus 100 people together. These are the men and the women have a college degree. So everybody at the college degree. And then we're going to put the 200 and the 250 together. So we get a p hat combined, meaning combine them all together of 160 divided by 450, which is approximately 0.356. That's the proportion we're gonna to use to check and make sure we have enough successes and failures. So when we go and actually check that we have 10 or more successes and 10 or more failures for our men and our women, that's the p hat combined that we wanna use. We're gonna use that 0.356 to check and the one minus 0.356. That's really important. It's a very small, teeny tiny detail, but a lot of kids get you know, dinged for it on the AP exam. Now we're also gonna to need to use that p hat combined when we calculate our standard error in the next step.